injuries, injuries, injuries. Every team will get them. It's how they deal with them that matters. Hello, amateurs. Welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me again today. There he is. ATT, glad to be here. Interesting selections. Indeed. In selections we're talking about is the Ireland versus Italy game, which is coming this Sunday. And for me, based on the selections that we've seen, particularly on the Ireland team, this game has just got a whole lot more load more interesting. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, Farrell does what he wants, doesn't he? he he's <laughs> he has uh, made some changes, and um, he will live or die on those those changes. But I think it's a it could be you know a genius in terms of um, all the conversations we've been having about psychology and making sure uh, individuals are are up for us um, and, and giving them enough um, enough to chase. Um, to, to feel that they're part of this you know it's a very interesting selection from him Brent. yeah and we're going to waste no time we're going to get straight into it but i guess it's important to say before we do that some of these changes are enforced due to injury and some would be selection choices but here we go ireland versus italy this coming sunday start with the forwards here and some big changes particularly in the back five of the scrum what are your thoughts alco well it's only just been announced. Are you aware of injuries? Are you? <laughs> I think Armani's. I think Armani was injured. I think Furlong okay. might have had a knock. Um, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't read any of that. Um, some. I thought some. Of it were, well, the majority was 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 resting place. Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, uh, Doris getting the captaincy armband as well is 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 really good. Um, poor old Ryan is just way out of that conversation. Haven't been, you know, uh, the favourite. Um, Great to see Beelham come in and what that means on the bench as well. Um, big second row, big big second row, and that's 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 really interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, it'd be really. Uh, I can't wait to see how this this balance is is going to be. Um, in the back row, we don't have a an out and out groundhog seven. Um, that's going to go and, and schnaffle. Um, Dor Doris will, will be good at that. Bard is is like six foot seven or whatever. Um, obviously Conan's a man mountain, so um, it's a big old pack, and um, they're gonna they're gonna go at Italy uh, in terms of uh, line out. Was they're gonna have loads of options at line out, and, and and obviously we know how how dangerous Ireland are from their launch plays um, and their mall, um as long as the referee isn't looking too hard at stuff. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a it's a interesting selection and, and a very dangerous side. Yeah, and a lot of carrying there is what I see in the in the Irish forwards. Everybody pretty much there is a carrying threat. So um, that's that's huge. They've got plenty of options there. Moving to the backs, and again, so Aki, I think, was another injury. Uh, so McCloskey comes straight in for him. But what about the other changes that you're seeing here, Elko? Casey in for um, Gibson Park. Yeah, no, again, nice. Um you know, given given the the uh, he he was what uh, tea boy last week, wasn't he? Um, bringing on the tea and, and and water and stuff, um, much deserved. I, I I like this because it's a monster nine and ten, and it gives it gives Crowley even more kind of consistency to to crack on and push on from a a great um debut um last week um as a starter. So yeah, I like I like it. Um, McCluskey, I've always really really liked um we kind of know what he's going to bring to the party and again if you think about if they have complete dominance at line out play and and, and he, he can be devastating off a launch play because you, you've got to keep your eyes on him he's such a big unit and um, we know the italian 12 and 13 are big lads um but then you know a little bit of deception they use him as a uh, or he pulls out the back or something then yeah it's going to be um interesting to watch but he, he'll be He'll be running hard lines, that's for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, back three is the is is the same, right? So more consistency there. Yeah. We've got Lowe's boot, and there it's there's a lot of um, there's there's definitely some tries in that in that back line. Yeah, I, there was a chance Ringrose might have been in, uh, sorry available for this week. He was certainly training during the week, but clearly hasn't made it. Um, yeah, again, I, I think, just um, want to sort of, yeah, go on. Yeah, the, the reports are he was he was ready to go, but they're just, they're just they're not going to risk him. Um, they're going to give him an extra extra week because we have a week off next week as well. Um, from from what I've heard, a lot of it is resting the players, which which I think is awesome. It, it, it again, it, it shows that Farrell is has got immense um, you know uh, confidence in the guys in the squad, uh, and it's not like 
afterthoughts and they're just there. He, he's he's bringing them in and he's giving them game time um, in an important game. I don't. The Italians might look at this as a bit of a you know um, uh, not the nicest thing to do because they're you know a second string, but you know these these guys are top class players that are coming in and and we'll get a chance to. Um, to 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 make their their positions their own. It's, it's even ma- matter if they are resting players because Ireland had had such a long turnaround. You know they played on Friday night and they've had, had all the way through to to recover. So if he has gone down that route, it's it's well, it could be a disaster, but it could be immensely um, favourable in terms of uh, motivation within the squad. Yeah, I mean with the resting with the with the guys who've taken knocks and stuff like that, I do wonder if this was a World Cup final on Sunday. You know how many of those guys would be fit and available to play? I'm sure potentially some of them, and the selection will be slightly different as a result of that. Um, but just in terms of overall for Ireland, you know they've been bedded down as a squad for such a long time now, with so many players being in and around it. That you know, even though they've made quite a few changes here, I still think that their systems are going to be so strong. The understanding amongst the players is going to be so strong that, and and the level of the players overall is so high that I don't expect to see even any, you know, sort of lowering in standards in terms of their, their performance. Uh, th- this this is where Farrell and the wider coaching team have got this this squad to be, you know, the 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 it, it's 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 bigger than the individual parts, you know, the, the the system is is greater than any individual and guys can come in and and, and join us. And when we kind of we saw that with um uh Crowley being able to to come in and you know the the less he, he the less he tries to go outside of the system the better it works you just fit in and you do your job and then when stuff breaks up then you can do things but yeah i i think they're at it they're they know the system so well um what what's crazy is that other teams can't work it out that's what i find really interesting because you, you know you would think that if they're if the system is so consistent um they you should be able to defensively work out but not many teams have arguably um so yeah it's um fair play to the coaching so i don't think it's just farrell obviously i think i think there's there, there's more to it than that well in terms of not working it out i think i've got a theory on that i just think ireland have so many options about the way they can play in any particular moment you know there's always three or four different passing options and their accuracy and their pace is so good that it's it's so difficult to you know, to break that down, I just wonder whether, you know, a super aggressive defence that England might bring. Actually, I think England, Italy will be fairly aggressive on on Sunday as well. That might be the way. Who knows? We'll tell. We'll talk about that later in the tournament. Um, but let's yeah, move on to the bench. Sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, it's, it's ultimate rugby, you know, it's and, and I think, uh, you know, gone are the, the days where you can go into a game and think, oh, we'll, you know, we'll keep these guys to nil. You've just got to accept that they're going to throw shots and score, and then you've got to then have a system and a way of playing and have options to be able to score. So it's almost like we're, we're getting to a point of uh, it's almost like American football or bat. You know, there's going to be scores each time. You know, I mean, we don't want it to go too loose, but you know, it's it. And that's why it's great to, to watch obviously, because there's, there's way more tries, but it's, yeah, I, I think Ireland are, are just, just sort of firing ahead with what they've, what they've done previously. Yeah. OK, let's run down the bench quickly. Kelleher, same sh- uh, as last week. Lockman and O'Toole coming in as the prop replacements. Um, Henderson, Van der Fleer moves to the bench. Heston, Gibson Park, Incomes, Byrne and Lama to the bench. What are your thoughts looking at the bench? Yeah, good. So, so moved moved from the, the uh, unusual uh, for Ireland 16 split last week back to a traditional uh, five and three. Um, great to see Lockman in. He's been he's been doing some great stuff for Munster, and he's a he's a big big man. Like he's he's huge. Um, so looking forward to seeing him. O'Toole, um, always liked him. He's uh, an ancestor of a New York policeman. So um, looking forward to seeing him um, getting his truncheon out and and uh, <laughs> getting things done. Um, and, and yeah, look, we've got Van der Fleer to come on if stuff's going wrong. Henderson, though, good to see. Um, and I, actually, what we should have started with, and I apologise to my Ulster. Uh, friends, you know, we were talking about, you know, how bad it was um, uh, that that there was no Ulster boys in. We, we've now got a couple in here now, um, and I, I'm really looking forward to seeing them go well. And it will make um, the trip down from Belfast and Dungannon and and, and uh, Ballymena all, all worthwhile for the guys um, uh, at the weekend. 
fantastic good stuff uh just a little bit on o'toole he's not you know we've seen he's not the greatest scrummager so based on the fact that he's going to be up against spagnolo who had a great first scrum last week it could be the scrum towards the end of the game could be an interesting factor here okay let's move on to italy uh and they too have had their injury issues this week um with negri popping rib cart- cartilage and then during the week they've lost uh, Lor- uh lorenzo canoni and ia chitsi as well who are both back five forwards however this forward pack still looks pretty damn strong to me and if they're going to lose players anywhere you know, I think the back row is probably where they can wear it the best. Yeah, yeah, they got they got some some strength and depth there. Yeah, shame to see Negri go. I mean, well, I can't believe he's not playing with a pop, pop cartilage. Wow, where is his heart? <laughs> 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 and one of the most painful, horrible injuries you can you can possibly get, uh, even if you have injections. But no, look, th- th- listen, th- these guys these guys are no mugs, and um, you know th- they're gonna they're gonna take it to to Ireland I've got no doubt about that um, and I think you're right in terms of the, the uh, scrum time Ireland will be under pressure you know uh, Furlong's not there so they're going to go after us we spoke about the perception of the scrum in terms of Porter and where referees heads are at that, I think that was proven last week they, they definitely have an issue um, you, for some reason the refs aren't standing on his side which is really annoying me but anyway that's a different thing um so so i I think they'll i think they'll go at us at scrum time and really really try to take us on yeah and the other the other (laughs) the other point which you made uh, about the island forwards not having an out and out fetcher at seven well italy have got two because zuliani is in at seven and lamaro obviously typically plays seven so the breakdown battle could be really interesting here can italy win a ton of turnovers and stop ireland playing that way yeah and and, and fastball is crucial for ireland right we, we spoke about last week that their ability to to have one man rooks so if if those guys can can slow that down and, and create issues with a newish uh team with new combinations and that could cause problems for Ireland because you know, if timing goes off, then it's a domino effect out and that can cause more problems. And we saw, you know, if Italy get chances, they will take them. We saw that last week. They, their back line is, looks good. Um, and obviously they've got a, a, a new tactical genius um, at the helm. So um, they're, they're 12 and 13 are brilliant. So we'll get into that now. Yeah, let's look at the back line because there's a couple of changes. Alessandro Garbisi drops out of the 23 altogether. So I can only imagine he's injured. I haven't seen reports yet, but I assume he must be. Stephen Varney, Gloucester Scrum Half, comes in. And then the only other change is Kapuotsu returning. We thought that it may be in place of um, Panny on the wing, but it's actually in place of Tommy Allen with Panny keeping his place. So in terms of the attacking ability of this Italian back line, it's just been supercharged now. Um, yeah, if they get a chance, they are going to fly. That is clearly going to be their tactic. Yeah, it, it, really interesting selection. Some moving Allen. So, so uh, probably with England last week, they thought more kicking. So they had a, had someone that could, could kick the ball long from full back. Uh, with Kabuta coming in, he's a much more attacking player. He's one of your favourites, um, and it kind of tells you the way they're going to come at this and play. Maybe that's why they've got two sevens as well that, to, to to bring in. And 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 if they're going wide, wide, um, using that back three, um, then then you know it, this could be. A really interesting fixture, and um, I'm hoping Ireland don't rue uh, not having resting and uh, not having um, their A team out. So let's see. Yeah, let's take a quick look at the bench. Uh, front row subs <laughs> exactly the same, uh, along with Zamboni in the second row replacing Zamboni. Ross, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ross Vincent, the Exeter number eight, comes in as a back row sub. That'll be his debut cap, I believe, if he gets on. Uh, and then Alan moves to the bench, Maury as well, and Paige Rello is the scrum half replacement. Um, I mean, it looks like a very dynamic bench as well. Vincent's pacey. Yeah. Maury's a powerful direct runner who will cut, you know, potentially a centre or could come on on the wing as well. I, I think the later stages in this game, if somehow it is still quite tight, could be could be quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got some pace on the on the bench, and or or, or if they need to shore it up uh, if they're ahead. Who knows? Um, with with Alan there to you know to to close off the game, but um, yeah, there's some decent decent players there. I, I think it's good that they've come to play, um, and they will they will push Ireland all the way. 
I don't, I, I think it's, it's going to be quite close, you know, um, but um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. In terms of the weather, the weather currently is due to be fine. No rain at all. Um, time will tell, obviously, but I just think if that's the case, then that will probably um, back this Italian selection as well. That'll probably help them. The big question mark for me is, is the Irish uh, system and squad strong enough to just carry on that level of performance? History would tell me that it is. Um, and can Italy break through that and, and upset them and knock them out of their rhythm? I think that's going to be the key to this game. What are your thoughts, Alco? How do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, God, if if the wheels came off, I mean, this could, this could properly destabilise uh, what such a settled squad. <laughs> um, but no, look, I... I... I think Ireland are too strong. I think the system in place and the, as you said, the, the the multiple options that they have. I don't see any player sort of making that less um, coming in, to be honest. Um, and I think uh, I think it will be. I think it will probably be fairly close. I think Italy will will play some good stuff, but um, just too much in that, uh, in that you know that number that number two in the world team. Um, and um, it's uh, they 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 can push it hard. They can they can you know really empty the tanks because they should you know obviously a lot most of them will be all fresh because they haven't played. Um, so you know physically really good, and then they all know that they've got two weeks off and a a good night out in in Dublin after the game. Uh, maybe a bit of bit of team building. So um, yeah, I fancy Ireland for sure. Yeah, I think well, I fancy Ireland too. Though I think Italy will play a lot of good stuff at the weekend. I think they'll probably embarrass Ireland a couple of times defensively. I can see Italy scoring a couple of great tries, which they have done over the previous few years in most fixtures. But I just feel like Ireland would just have them arm's length for long enough for most of the game. I'm going to pick Ireland. I'm going to pick them by two scores plus. I feel like it could be quite a high score, you know. 35-22. 35, <laughs> 35 22. Yeah, that sounds about good. Yeah, I think it's going to be um, fairly close. I reckon it will be Ireland plus 13. Plus 13. That's exactly the same score that I got. Anyway, okay. <laughs> That's what we think. <laughs> what do you think at home? Um, do you think this Irish selection is going to be strong enough to beat Italy? Do you think? Italy are going to bring the game that we've described, how we think they could potentially beat Ireland. Let us know in the comments down below. We'll join you there for a conversation. Lots of big talking points in this one, and we're looking forward to it. Um, give this video a thumbs up while you're down there, if you don't mind. Elko, thanks so much for your time today. Cheers, TT. Thanks for having me, and uh, enjoy the games. Absolutely, and you can subscribe there. Watch that one next, and don't forget to get out and play.